So you go outside, set up your rig, and get everything prepared for Jupiter, only to find out that your image just looks like this. Well, that's not very good, is it? <laughs> well, that was my image quite a while back, but it didn't look too great, and I always wanted to improve upon that. So today, I'm going to give you some tips on how to get detailed photos of Jupiter. First off, the most obvious reason is likely seeing. Because if you don't have good seeing, I'm serious, seeing makes a huge impact on planetary images. So if you look at the sky in the, you know, when you're photographing Jupiter or you maybe look at back at your live video, when you if you notice that there's wobbling and this, you know, planets going all out of shape and everything, that's likely a cause of bad seeing. And also if there's big halos around it, that could be caused by bad seeing. So I would make sure to account that, you know, your seeing is actually good the night you go to photograph it. The second thing I want to talk about is bad collimation because collimation is very important to get great photos of Jupiter or any planet in general. If you don't have good collimation, it will make everything look kind of out of focus or kind of like an astigmatism effect. Everything will be distorted or some color channels look may look shifted even if you're using a monochrome camera. That's because of bad collimation. And there will be halos on one side and not on the other. That's normal for bad collimation. So make sure your telescope is in good collimation before you go ahead and image the planets. Now let's dive a little deeper here. If you have a bar lens attached to your telescope, make sure that the bar lens is not overpowering the telescope. If it is overpowering the telescope, that is a big bad reason as to why your telescope or Jupiter photos don't look very good. Uh, who wants to take telescope photos? If the bar lens is overpowering your telescope, this can really cause your image to be dimmer, which means you have to crank up the exposure and gain, which means also you're gonna have to get more blurry, smeary shots with higher exposures, and you're also gonna have to get more noise, which overall really leads to like a very you know smudgy looking blob so you don't really want to do that even even if you stack a lot of frames it's not really going to help much once it's too much blown up you'd have to really shrink it down to the original size it was like without the barlow in post-processing another thing to make sure of is that you're taking enough frames if you're not taking enough frames well you're not going to get those amazing details and everything on jupiter especially because you're not capturing the best moments possible because if you don't capture the maximum as possible, you're going to end up with the blurrier ones and the smeared or whatever, the bad seeing ones, which is going to result in, you know, a blurrier, halio, halio, what did I just say? halio -er image that's going to end up very, you know, blurry and just messy. So that that's why I would take a ton of frames, like 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, even 120,000 if you're not doing monochrome, you're just doing RGB. But you don't want to stack all the frames together because you'll get like a smeared Jupiter. And this could be another reason why you're only seeing the bands, but you're not really seeing any details on Jupiter is because you're mainly stacking too many frames or you're stacking too over too many spans of time. You know, like maybe and I'm talking like minutes make a big difference for Jupiter. Jupiter rotates very quickly. So if you get, you know, maybe like 10,000 frames, you might want to take some of those frames, like cut 2000 out per each of them and then you'd want to combine them in like something like when Jupos, you know, after you stack individual sets and whatever, that way you get a derotated image so you don't have to keep on uh, getting blurry results, if you know what I mean. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, my name is Asher and I make astrophotography videos all about planetary deep sky and all sorts of astrophotography. So if you like that kind of content, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Anyways, until next time, clear skies.